Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about long-term data storage or archival storage or cold storage. So let's dive right into it. Now, you have to understand, we need it. Every Tom, Dick and Harry needs it. Meaning we take photos like there is no tomorrow and somehow we can't even pull out a photo that is like uh, five, six months ago. Especially old mobile phone ago. You really cannot do that. So unless it's like all everything backed up to the Google and be mindful if you back it up nowadays, generally there's a very good chance a smaller version rather than the full size. So we are creating more and more data and we are, have no way of storing it. And again, it's not limited to you and I, it's limited to everybody. So it's a very, very big thing. And as you get older, you kind of realize that data is more important than PC. It's not the uh, hardware itself that matters that much, it's the data. And there could be personal and professional categories, meaning some data you need to store for corporate reasons, you have to do it. It's required by law or you could be fined or worst case scenario, you can even go bankrupt if you mess up some data. So personal categories there. Personal, again, personal for me. And you have to understand, uh, many times people will say, I have NAS, I have another NAS, I have this and that. Awesome. But here's the, there is inherent niche side effect of active state. Active state, basically anything that you have to continuously charge. For example, uh, hard drives, you have to put them in active state or they literally die out. And even if you like literally have a hard drive, put it somewhere else, like HP does make a replaceable, like hot swappable kind of hard drive system. Again, even that is only rated for five or set, 10 years. And be mindful, generally people don't recommend doing that. So again, it's active that is pretending to be passive. But you, and in server cases, that's a really bad issue for you. For example, you're like, hey, I'm storing all my data on free cloud. Uh, here's the deal, how do you know it's gonna free, it's gonna be still free in like, you know, in the future. As data becomes more uh, premium, company can simply say, lol, because again, Google did that. Google was like, hey, everybody will upload their uh, basically camera mobile phone direct photo into the Google photo cloud without compression. Then they slowly is like, yeah, no, we can't afford to do that. So that happens. If you are using free cloud, there is a serious risk of that, that they're going to pull the rug under you. If you're paying for it, that also is a very serious risk. Because again, if you need that data 10 years from now, how can you guarantee that you have never messed up a payment for 10 years or the company never messed up anything up? So active states are inherently risky, inherently dangerous, unless somebody is there constantly maintaining it. And the biggest danger to active state data is not the hardware limitation, it's the human error factor, meaning you're gonna mess something up. And I guarantee you, many times you must have deleted a file that you're like, why the heck did I delete it? Like, I'll give you a simple example, is uh, another YouTuber, Linus Tectus, very popular guy. He literally has a server whose sole job is, the moment somebody dumps file from camera cards or memory cards into the computer, computer clones it and does not allow a user to delete it because many times people have done it like instead of doing like copy paste they did cut paste on the paste operation failed they no longer have the file and they come like oh yep yeah. and they learned it the hardware that you always have to have a uh, factor for human errors then we come to the brutal file anything that is connected to the nev web is affected by a ransomware and these ransomware are so powerful they can destroy anything like fundamentally anything. There is no like, oh, I'm rich or like I have this security system, does not matter. Ransomware is one of those puppies that's like just goes through anything. It can destroy Canon and things of that nature. So do not make a mistake where it's like, oh, everything is safe from ransomware. Big corporations are not safe. You and I don't even talk about it. That's why we need cold data to archive, meaning you put it and forget it. Basically, back in the old days of VHS, ironically, there are far more active VHS today that are old enough and functioning enough than compared to pen drive, hard drives and things of that nature. So this is what we need, archive system. Like why the heck your old photograph album still works? Sometimes photograph albums, like my photographic albums uh, go back as like around 100 years. Yeah. So that's the need. Now, uh, the most hyped up talked about is that DNA data storage. Benefit, super large capacity. If you have infinity in terms of time, because be mindful, right now it's not, a, like principle has been proven. Early prototypes have been made, but is it a functional, fully realized tool? No, it's not there. Like at best right now, uh, what people can do, if you're willing to pay $1,000, you can get your uh, Bitcoin wallet addressed, uh, basically encoded in DNA. Not really that much data. Like fundamentally speaking, it's very early uh, stage and it's hyper expensive because even though there are quote unquote tools to do it, it requires too much manual labor. And you are talking about bits, you're not talking about like gigabytes, very tiny. And it's only once a write, once a read. You cannot do anything other than that. So how the heck it works is like you take your data, you apply codex to it. Be mindful, you cannot just take zero one and directly code it through DNA. You have to have a codex, codex algorithm for it. 
then you write it using DNA synthesizer. That synthesizer is going to store it in four blocks basically. You have four bricks in uh, DNA compared to two bricks in your uh, digital data. So you have to create a different algorithm to port that puppy from one to another with some error correction. Everything has an error correction built into it. So you do that, then you write that uh, system. Then that right system, that, that DNA strand is replicated millions of times and that's where people get the idea that it's indestructible. Is it indestructible? No. Is it indestructible in real life? Yes. Why? You can create millions and billions and billions of copies of it. And I'm not even joking about billions apart, like literally billions of copies. Because if you have to read that data, if you're like, okay, I have this foil, I have to read the data, that data will be go through DNA sequencer. Again, you have to apply the codex again. Without the codex, it's useless. So people saying like, oh, if we are always going to synthesize the DNA, so we'll know that. Yeah, that's the easy part. Hard part is how the heck you're going to figure out, even if you know, like there is some data here. If you do not have the codex, you cannot decode it. So DNA sequence happens and you get your data, but that DNA would be destroyed. Same happens creation. Creation is also done. One. So every strength comes from the cloning phase. So cloning is super easy. We can have a pretty dish, put it there, clone millions of copies, store these copies every far apart simply because yes, they can be destroyed by cold. Yes, they can be destroyed by fire. The reason why they do not happen is simply because you have billions of it. So if you have billions of DNA, uh, basically dinosaur bones, some will survive. Some will survive. And that's the reason why these are considered as robust. And the true benefit of this puppy is capacity. Yes, you can truly actually outgrow in terms of capacity of uh, data creation, meaning you can store whole of YouTube and you're like, bro, I got this. I can do this all day. That's the whole benefit. But we are not there yet, not even close, meaning megabytes per second is not achieved yet. So we need terabytes per second. This puppy is way behind schedule. So it's not ready for prime time yet. So any videos, any articles you see about DNA storage, it's very far off. Technology is proven and more than enough rich people are pouring more than enough big money into it that it will become slowly over time something viable, but it's not happening anytime soon. And be mindful, the price is like, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. It's that kind of price. So that, do not think about DNA is gonna save us all anytime soon. In future, I hope, but not anytime soon. Then we come to 5D glass storage or uh, like, you know, uh, basically spiritual successor to optical disc. Now somebody took the idea of optical disc and they made it fat and then they made it strong. Meaning uh, what we have in terms of optical disc, there's a polycarbonate. That's good, but not that good, especially in terms of temperature. That puppy melts at as low as like 300 degrees Celsius. So somebody took a crystal, a raw crystal, pure crystal. Like our glass is very weak simply because we make it weak. Because if we have to work on a very hardened glass, it's very, 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 very difficult. But you can make that glass disc that is very robust. Even though it looks like a glass, you drop it, it is going to dent your floor. It's not going to crack because it's a rock crystal. Why don't we use that in our day-to-day -day life? It's expensive. Like normal furnace can easily deal with normal glass. This furnace requires like 1000 plus degrees Celsius. That's why for manufacturing cost reason, we don't use like true high quality silica glass. So you get that true high quality silica glass and you get hyper duper super hyper powerful laser. What does that mean? That simply means you take a laser pulse, whatever the power may be, maybe one kilowatt. Now you're like, that's not that powerful. Yes, dear. You are talking about one kilowatt as a single pulse. How wide is that pulse? For example, let's say it's continuous uh, laser. Uh, so meaning one kilowatt hour for one hour. You take that hour vector, you multiply that. Basically, you do temporal compression by one second. What does that mean? If you dump all that energy into one second, now you have multiplied the power by 3600. Do the same. You go to femtosecond. At that point, you are, the power is stupid level. We don't even talk about the power. It's stupid. And it's so small in second that it can go through the glass, cause the basically voxel creation without causing damage to the surrounding area. It's so goddamn fast. Like molecules around it cannot even react to it. That's how fast it is. That's why this requires femtosecond laser. Expensive puppy. You can, in principle, read it at a very high speed because again, uh, while writing it, you do need femtosecond later, but reading it, you do not need. Basic laser can do. And the reason why we call it 5D is simply because there has three, dim uh, three dimension of physical data, like X, Y, Z, three coordinates. And then you have two dimensions of data in the voxel itself. Basically, voxel is how big the voxel is, meaning how long the pulse was. You can create the voxel size based on that. Meaning you can have like, you can see some dots are small, some dots are big. And if you are seeing colors, colors are representing that voxel size. There is no actual color there. It's just like small or big. The voxels are used for, like uh, for computer decoding, it's converted into colors. Colors are like arbitrary. You can have like blue, green, whatever have you. So voxels are created in different sizes. Now that just gives you one extra dimension. Where the heck the 
Fifth dimension comes. Fifth dimension comes from the polarization. Lasers have polarization, so you can turn the polarization lens. That will give you angle control. So basically, this puppy. Using this, now you can create a five-dimensional disc that has all the data. Like this puppy can store a movie in movie grade. What does movie grade mean? Meaning as highest quality scan as possible. So uh, there, the first movie I think that was ported into glass was uh, Superman, complete movie. And I mean real, like a real quality movie. So it's not like a Blu-ray copy, it's like a raw copy that can be upscaled, enhanced or things of that nature. So it does work, but be mindful. In principle, it could last very long time and you will hear people talking about like it can last for billions of years. The reason when they are talking about billions is simply because there is nothing inherently in this A that could change. For example, even if you have optical disc and let's say the uh, features in it is not very inherently stable. So over time it could wear out without even having anything, it could just wear out. If it's very sensitive, for example, electron gates, uh, cosmic ray background radiation could over time flip it. This is inherently stable, so it can last. How long? As long as the molecules in the structure can last. How long molecules can last? Depends on the element. Elements, how long elements gonna last? That depends on the half-life. Based on half-life, they're gonna give you that number. Long as number. So it can last, fundamentally it can last. And given the fact that you are using high quality quartz crystal, uh, this puppy is immune to fire. Like basic fire cannot even touch this. 1000 degrees Celsius for continuous exposure, it will still be like, 1000 degrees Celsius. So basically basic house fire will not even bother it. So if you have a library out of it and basic fire happens, it's like, bro, I don't care. Like I don't even care. So this is a good technology, but super duper hyper expensive and you can't even pay for it. It's like uh, Microsoft is trying to build a server rack where they have two uh, 242 U, U size of units where you open it up, there is one glass panel that you can put in and then get this etching. Super slow process. It will take days, but it is very high quality, high density and does not have the issues of DNA where it's like people may mistake it. It is kind of robust. So that is 5D glass storage. Again, still not ready. So what about the backbone of our modern industry? That is LTO, linear tape open, meaning somebody took VCR, took the cassette out of it, and they just yeeted one spool out of it. Every cassette generally had two spools. They are like, what if we had only one? Now this puppy was created as early as 90s, and uh, the idea was, like from day one, the idea was it's an archive format. That's why they removed the second spool. They did not want the ability to like going back and forth again and again. Everything about this was inherently designed in such a way that you make the operator, basically the medium as cheap as possible while making the cost go into the drive. Drive would be idiotically expensive, but the tapes would be cheap. So to make the tape as cheap as possible, make it as small as possible. To make it as small as possible, remove the 50% of it. Basically remove the second spool. That makes it small, makes it easy to manufacture, ship and that's how. And it's a backbone of enterprise. Now, the most amazing aspect of it, because it was created as an enterprise standard, it had laws put into it. Meaning every time LTO creates a new standard, the player must be able to read at least one back or sometimes three backs. What does that mean? That simply means this is LTO 9. That can go up to 18 terabyte. That's not where it started. It started with 100 gigabyte tapes. So what happened to the people? Those are stuck? No. Uh, that's the amazing art aspect of it. It was designed from day one to scale up. What does that mean? That simply means if you had bought into the system of 100 gigabyte cassettes, no problem. Scale as much as you want, store as much as you need to. Once you reach a point where it's like, yeah, I really can't, 100 per cassette is not viable enough. Now you upgrade to, let's say that was LTO1, you upgrade to LTO3. LTO3 players, basically the driver could easily read LTO1 tapes. And you put LTO tape once, you dump data into your computer, computer dumps data into LTO3 tapes, now your cashier size shrinks again. And this process can be done again and again and again until you reach 18 terabytes. And that's why the, the fact that it has industry background, industrial support, and the, every partner in this uh, basically firm is doing their part, it's surprisingly robust. And these puppy can last 10 years without any hassle, 30 years if you are lucky. Now be mindful, because it is magnetic, it will wear down. It's not like put and forget. Like it's not 5D glass storage. It's not put and forget. And because it's a single spool, you cannot random access file. So to read any file, generally it's a best idea to use a basically automated system, put it in a drive and just read the whole data. Dump all the read data, like basically 18 terabytes of data into your computer, then find the file you need. It's much easier that way. So you can buy tapes even in India, not for not too much expensive, like LTO 6 is kind of cheap at this point in time. That gives you, if I'm not mistaken, around two terabytes. So you can do a lot of storage for a lot of low cost. It's the drive that's gonna kill you. Drive is like few lakhs, like in terms of dollar, it can easily go up to $10,000.
again it was inherently designed for enterprise so pricing had no what you say like no thought put into the pricing part of it but they're like they can afford it so it's a backbone of everything like how the heck supercomputers are backed up that's how how the heck wikipedia is backed up that's how that's everything every company every corporation how the heck their data is backed up this puppy so this is a linear typo like it's an awesome thing and does have capacity but damn expensive then we come to the poor people option basically this puppy option uh, that is blu-ray it's the best tool right now available for home users and you can easily store pictures data even some videos now be mindful whenever you are getting video let's say for example for my camera and because this camera has the all eye function i'm getting video files that are huge but here's the deal that's not the final delivery that's the video editing file that's the raw quote unquote raw once you do the editing the final size delivery size is much smaller that i can store that i can store a lot of so at that point in time even to, uh, like 22 gbs of uh, single disk capacity is not too small you can store a lot especially in terms of pictures and all that jazz be mindful we still have camera uh, mobile phones that are only have 120 gigabytes of usable space and only 70 or 80 gigabytes is stored in one disk so you can literally have one mobile phone if you replace your mobile phone every two year all you need is one disk per mobile phone and you can store all the photos without any compression of google so you can do this and drives are kind of cheap now be mindful when i first time saw this is for 5000 rupees uh when i bought it this was around uh, 9000 rupees now it's showing 12000 rupees so price is going up uh, but be mindful this is a very good uh, asus department system it's generally you should be able to buy it under 15k now there is a sub brand of uh, optical disc that is m disc m disc is a technology where they realize that the layer where you are etching it through lasers that's the weak link again why they wanted to work on cheap lasers so they made the layer very vulnerable so a laser can etch it consequence the layer is vulnerable meaning normal aging can destroy it so m disc was created as a alternative the inorganic layer or the rock layer mineral layer as they call it it's so hard that you need a special laser to etch it which that's why you need m disc stamp on your writers but can you read it on normal paper easily no problem reading is easy writing requires much higher power laser that's why m disc logo is important so if i write something on it it can survive much longer now be mindful if you do not have humidity and very high heat these things can easily last for um, well 1000 years that's the rating of m disc normal dvds can last very long time so if you're like hey i am not in the place of spending like 8145 rupees for 50 uh, disc and be mindful this is not even m disc uh, but it does have 50 disc 50 22 gb capacity discs so they have very good storage in terms of uh, long term basically put it and forget it ransomware cannot touch it and this stable for 10 years and dri what drivers again they are available they have been available they will be available price may go up but they will be available and uh, you can even go down to dvd level and dvd level is free at this point in time you can do dvd dual layer that gives you around 7.2 gigabytes of usable space that's still a lot like a lot lot so this is a simple option especially for documents dvd documents awesome and be mindful uh, dvd was learned from the mistakes of cd so cd had the layer the actual data layer on top so it can be scratched dvd had in between same with blu ray and with m disc is inherently harder inherently like you can put them in a refrigerator nothing will bad will happen to it it's surprisingly robust i've used it so i'm putting my actual you know money where my mouth is so this is the only thing you can do for home scale unless the best tool is lto tapes but again can you actually afford it and you're like oh i'm going to put everything in the cloud can you afford to be damn sure that you're never going to miss any payment because again they'll delete your data without second chance they're like data gone be mindful they also have to pay for it so especially with free tiers be damn worried about them and many companies have went bankrupt because they were offering too good of a prices to collect customers and then they realized oh hard drives are expensive so this is the best thing that a person normal person can do with lot of their photos and be mindful photos have this one of the weird qualities is that they are not valuable today they are valuable 10 years from now 20 years from now at your you know last phases of your life that's very important at this point in time so this is a very good tool that you and i can use and i'm using it so i would urge you to have some backups at least have dvds come on do a layer dvds have it so this was my presentation on basically cold storage hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching